approve the minutes. Do you have a motion and a second? All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, under public comment, we have Advantage Technology. Is someone here? Yes, ma'am. I'm Brad Williams. Appreciate the commission taking the time to let us come and really just introduce ourselves. I know you guys have a lot of business to get to, so out of respect for your time, I'll be as brief as possible. Um, we're based out of Charleston, West Virginia. We've been in business about 15 years. Our owner started the company out of a spare room in his uh, house at the time. The, the first customer he took on back then is still one of our main customers today. And what we try to do is a little different than a lot of other IT companies. We're very consultative with what we do. We don't come in and try to push and sell you with a lot of things or lock you into a contract. But with the way that the environment's going in the state, with the security concerns, we know that there have been ransomware attacks at other commissions that have caused issues. And everybody right now is concerned to make sure that one, you're protected, two, you can recover if something like that does happen. So we're going around introducing ourselves, making ourselves available. We're happy to sit down, look at how your system is set up now, point out holes that you may currently have, and tell you how you can plan to keep that from happening in the future. Um, I'd love to stand up here and tell you that if you were working with us that that sort of thing could never happen to you, but I'd either be overconfident or lying to you. As these things progress, it's a constant threat that we have to be aware of. Um, if you're not familiar with ransomware or what we ran into, let's say in Harrison County, somebody gets access to your system, they lock it down, and then they tell you, hey, pay us this much money and we'll give it back to you. And to their credit, most of the time, they do. They shockingly treat it like a legitimate business after the fact. You pay a fee, they turn over your data with no guarantee they're going to do it to you again later, um, and then you try to proceed as usual. In Harrison County, they ran into a case where they paid that fee that they demanded, and then the people came back and said, great, thanks for the deposit, and when can we expect the rest of the money? And they're still in the process of trying to recover from that. So what we do is we try to look and make sure, one, that you have all the active security protocols in place. You've got the right hardware protecting anybody from getting into your system, that we're making it as difficult as possible for those people to get access. Two, we try to make sure that if they do, you have proper backup solutions in place so you can recover without having to negotiate with these people. There's a laundry list of different things that we deal with and we offer. We do everything from structured cabling all the way to high-level virtual CIO services. I'm not going to bore you with the laundry list because really the part that's relevant, at least to this organization and other counties throughout the state, is the security and redundancy portion. Um, as far as our capability to help you guys here in Lincoln County, we also were awarded the uh, state K-12 contract uh, two years ago. We were on there with one other IT company that has since been acquired by an international company out of uh, Amsterdam. And they've kind of reduced their presence. So. We're expanding to different parts of the state so we can take care of all 55 counties. We want to introduce ourselves, give you guys our information, and if you have any questions, concerns, we're happy to advise and walk you through in any way that we can. Um, do you all have any technology concerns or questions for me today? Well, again, I said I'd be short. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I have one quick question. What kind of data did they access the Harrison County Commission? I mean, what, what did they lock up? We have some people that are currently helping them with that process now, moving forward to recover that. Um, I'm not sure legally if I'm allowed to say what access they did or did not get um, access to. Um, generally, though, any servers that you have, they can lock anything on that server. So if you have file storage, if you have a remote server, anything they can get into, they encrypt that drive, and it keeps you from getting access to it. Um, even in cases where people do recover their data, there's no guarantee that they haven't done anything with that data in the meantime. They haven't installed a backdoor. They're not going to take that and publish it later or give it to another third-party source. I, I guess my question was is what vulnerabilities would counties have? Um, basically anything that you have in your computer systems, if you have financial information, if you have personnel information, payroll, um, anything that you are storing electronically, they can get and take down. So even if it was stuff that, let's say you had a database and they were just tax records, receipts, financials, anything that's on that, they can get access to. Right, thank you. Thank you.
Okay, next on the agenda is Lisa Wells, Region 2. Is this closing this out now? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like coming here. Every I come. do. I love coming here. That's what it is. Now, I've got two items. Would you take phase one first or let's take, take phase one? Okay. Hold on. Oh, okay. Nobody's here. I was making sure there's something on that. Oh, on that. <laughs> uh, for lower mud phase one, yes, I'm still working with the engineer um, trying to get down exactly what we have left to work with to do some additional work. And that's still in the, I actually sent him some stuff today. You know, he does a lot of change orders. And we just, it's taking time for us to get back and forth. I think we're pretty close to having a number of getting approvals from USDA. So, in preparing for that, you know, that work could take a little while longer. What I have brought for your consideration is another budget amendment for the Community Development Block Grant, along with an a addendum to your administrative service agreement. Um, by the time this project, we do extra work on it, the projected timeline before we do our final, final performance report and whatnot close out is going to be probably February of 2020. That's what we kind of projected when we did our grant extension. Uh, in the meantime, our, this project's been going on for a while, so I've, um, the administrative service agreement with um, Region 2 was signed in March of 2017, I believe, no, 16. So it, it had a 36-month clause, so basically that, that 36 months up was up in March. So I'm considering moving some additional funds back in, from, in the Community Development Block Grant um, from we have, we have built everything into construction at this point because this grant has to be given back at the end anyway and we still have some money left because of the project overrun and I have a budget amendment to increase the administration line item by 15,000 and decrease where we moved a bunch of funds the construction line item to fit for, by 15,000 for your consideration and an addendum and such adding 15,000 to our existing contract for administrative services for the that project until we close out in probably February. Can we look at that? Sure. Here's our budget amendment. And here's the actual agenda. So you're moving 15 from construction mm -hmm. to administrative? Yes. So this isn't an overall increase, it's just a shift? It's a shift. It's a shift and it's a shift of funds that are probably not going to be used much more. We're not permitting, we don't do admin out of RUS anyway, which would be, you know, as we move forward with anything else. Right now we're already pretty much, we, we're at the 90% mark of what expenditure, so we've not been billing for several months now for admin costs, for travel and things like that. Services. All right. Um, like this is okay myself. Do you all have a, any concerns with that? Oh, okay, do I have a motion to, what she so, said, to move 15,000? So budget amendment is that what Budget amendment number five for the community okay. development block grant. I motion. Second. Okay, motion is second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, just today's date, will that be nice? That'll be fine. I need to submit that to actually officially move it around in the budget. Do yeah, we need a separate amendment or anything for that? It's the same, I think. I would, where you rolled it together, I think it'll be fine, but if you're more comfortable it's making it separate, either way, I think we'll be fine. Okay. All right. All right. See, now you are definitely going to see me for a few more months. <laughs> And now I have moving on to lower med phase two. Um, we had our public hearing at 5:30 earlier to discuss the lower med phase two project, which is a water extension project. It's basically continuing on what has already happened. Um, it, it could make service available to approximately 70 potential um, current and, or potential and commercial customers. Um, this project basically is going out to Buffalo Creek, Little Buffalo Creek, and surrounding areas. 
The overall project budget is $2,337,000. Um, the funding scenario has varied a couple times. Um, we're going in with the Community Development Block Grant, which I'm presenting tonight for signature, is for $1.5 million. The other funding source that makes up the rest would be from USDA. Um, there has been an ARC grant that has went in for this project. We've not heard anything about They had encouraged us to do that. Um, so we're just basically going in for every shot that we can get for every funding source. So while we're waiting for that, we wanted to make sure that we went ahead and didn't miss the deadline for this year in case those funds didn't come through for us. Um, tonight I have for you know, many, many um, signature sheets, and some of which are resolutions, if I can present this. There are tabs in this binder, I believe, and Jesse Richardson from our office. The yellow tabs are just for the president. president, and the red tabs will be ones that are for everybody. Okay. And I can kind of go over the comfortable. I think the first document they're going to sign is the cover letter. All right. First of all, let's, uh, we probably need another motion. I mean, we have the public hearing. There is a resolution that you're going to need a motion for. Okay. It's one of the last documents in the binder. It is an authorizing resolution for filing the application, right. and that would be what would cover that. If you want to go ahead, it is the very last document that's kind of where they like it in the file, which makes no sense. It kind of seems it would be right up front. Authorizing resolution. Okay, do I have a motion authorizing resolution for the filing of the application for the Small Cities Block Grant for Phase 2, Lower Mud River? Mm -hmm. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. Right. Motion carries. Is, there, is there any more things we have to move on? Um, there is a fair housing resolution. Okay. And that would definitely probably be one of the red jobs, maybe? I think so. I think there's three back. Maybe it's the one that gets the motion. You can sign it in pink. <laughs> Do you have blue pens, by chance? Uh, uh -oh. it's I spoke too soon. It's okay for the one, but do you, yeah. You can use my blue pen. I have a blue pen if you like. Everybody, it's, it's a preference for grant documents. We all get everybody down. The president, if one signs the fair housing, or do we all sign it? Um, I'm trying to, it can be seen on the red if it's the, it would be a red document every once they're all the people sign. I would think off the top yep. of my head. Oh, it's got Perry Matthews. Matthews. Oh. Well, we can, which, yeah, it's got Josh on the letter hand. Yeah, we didn't change the commissioner on the signature sheet for the fair housing. Sorry. That's all right. That's fine. He does that sometimes to us. So. <laughs> Ghost of cake. <laughs> all the yellow are just missing, right? That is correct. <laughs> Most of the documents are HUD related documents. <laughs> he doesn't need your blue pen after all. You know, that's what that's what we get for what you know, I give you a blue pen. Sorry about that. Um, all the other documents are for signature are basically um, documents that say they don't be compliant with HES guidelines. There's Section 3 compliance, um, citizen participation, assurances, basically disclosure update, that you're going to do the right thing and follow the letter of the law.
right, this thing's happening, all right. And we'll get the other fair housing resolution to, I'll email it to Mary and then hopefully we can get a signature on that and we'll get that in there. All right, thank you. I really appreciate your time, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have a motion then to approve um, travel for Francis Hold and Alan Holder uh, on the dates that I just listed? Okay, I have a motion. A second. Okay, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, I don't think we're going to need an executive session. We've had a few uh, things legal and some lawsuits, but I think it's kind of worked itself out. Um, so we don't need to, I don't think we need to do that. And we don't have anything other unfinished business. Have you guys had a chance to look at the new business? <coughs> yes. Um, because of Barry Moore. Barry Moore. Yeah. You all are here with Barry Moore today. Do you have anything, questions about it? It's on the agenda to approve to send it out for Judiciary Council. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Shannon Bland. I represent Mr. and Mrs. Moore, the parents of Barry, who are here uh, this evening. We filed a petition uh, to remove uh, Robin Moore, uh, which is pending, and I noticed on the agenda that, that you have it there to uh, refer it to a Judiciary uh, Supervisor. So. Um, we don't have anything to add to that, I guess, okay. if that's already been recommended by the prosecutor. Yes, he's had a chance to review it, and that's what he suggested. That was his recommendation for us to do, so. Okay. All right. Okay, and thank I, you. I, I represent Robin Moore, and I'm, I filed a response, and I apologize for getting it here late it was this morning, but I didn't receive a copy of the petition until last week, and so I filed it this morning and spoke to some people in your office and filed a response. Um, I, I would take the position it doesn't need to be referred. We're, we've done all the heavy lifting. We're on the verge of having it wrapped up here within the next few months. But if you will refer it, I'm not going to throw too big of a fit either. Uh, but I, I Well, this one we did let the prosecutor look at, and that's what he suggested happen. So Understood. We usually go with what he tells us on the state. So. I appreciate it. All. Well, thank you all for coming, though. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll move Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion to approve the new businesses listed on the agenda and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 So the new business can. Uh, that's all we have on the agenda. Do you all have anything else that you would like to say? Do you 
you know who that referral will be to, or will, will you guys um, assign that, or will the prosecutor assign that? It would be either be Joe Stevens or Paul Ryder. If okay. there's any, Joe has conflict quite often, so, but one of those two. Okay. So once you refer, you let us know. Yes, of course. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, um, just say I wanted to thank everybody for the prayers and uh, the well wishes. Of, as, uh, I went through my heart surgery and things, and uh, I, uh, it shows me um, what a good place this is to live. I want to add to that and say that it's so nice to have you here tonight. We didn't expect you out this soon, and we're glad you're doing so well. Josh, do you have anything? Okay. Well, if nothing else, then we will, um, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn until Thursday, September 5th at 6 p.m. for a regular scheduled meeting.